Welcome to LTHS Physics. Uh, I got an example for you. We're going to have two objects colliding. We're going to talk about momentum and energy, and we're going to draw some graphs, which uh, co commonly on the AP exam, they often ask you to draw graphs of, in this case, we're going to draw energy and momentum um, and with, as, as they vary with time. Uh, and these are going to be sketches. They won't be exact, although we will have some numbers on there. Uh, so the, the problem starts off kind of easy. Um, and the, thankfully, the math in this problem isn't that hard. You just got to be kind of careful with the details. So uh, we're going to have two carts. One is 10 kilograms. And he's moving to the right with a velocity of 20 meters per second. And he is going to collide with a bigger cart whose mass is 30 kilograms. And I'll make this kilograms. And you got a spring attached to this dude, spring constant K. Okay? And we'll give you a K. Oh, we'll put wheels in this dude. No friction or anything. And we'll say K is uh, 1,000 newtons per meter. Okay? And um, basically, the, the, what I want to start with is I want to figure out when these guys collide, what's the max compression of the spring? So what's going to happen is, this dude is going to hit this dude. It's going to compress, and compress, and compress, and compress, and then they're going to split apart. Okay, what's that max compression of that spring? Second thing we're going to find is after they're all done colliding, what are their final velocities? Okay, so we're going to do those two things first. Then we're going to do some graphing. So as far as the masses go, um, or as far as the uh, the max compression goes, when first guy hits second guy. When's that max compression going to occur? What's going to be happening when that max compression occurs? Well, think about it. You got two carts. One hits the other. When the spring is maximum compressed, what do we know about the carts? Well, at that moment, they're going the same velocity. It's as if they've just undergone an inelastic collision. So um, what we need to do is figure out, well, what's this, the velocity of the two carts when they're moving at that same velocity? And then we're going to use that to figure out max compression. So um, for that velocity that they share at that moment, they're going the same velocity when our max compression occurs. Well, we're going to use, we got two objects interacting. That's conservation of momentum. So uh, we have the total momentum before the collision equals the total momentum. I'll label this M for middle of the collision, during this, the middle of it. Okay. Uh, so beforehand, I've got a 10 kilogram block. He's moving at 20. Afterward, the moment they're moving together, we combine their masses because they're moving together. And that'll be V. And again, I'll call that V middle. Okay. Well, that's real simple. It's 200 over 40, um, which is 20 over 4, which is 5. So the velocity when they're in the middle of their collision is 5 meters per second. So at, at some moment, they're both moving together at 5 meters per second. Well, now how do I find the max compression of the spring? Okay. Well, we're going to use conservation of energy. Um, there aren't any non-conservative forces doing work here. The only non-conservative force even acting is the normal force, and that's directed perpendicular to all the motion, so it doesn't do any work. We do have the spring, but that's part of our energy equation. That's our elastic potential energy. So before they collided, um, this little dude had kinetic energy. So I'll write that out as 1 half little m v squared. Okay? Um, at the moment that they're going 5 meters per second together, when the max compression occurs, okay? well, um, the spring is going to be compressed. So we're going to have some elastic potential energy. And they're still moving. So we're going to have some kinetic energy. And I'll call that kinetic energy middle, OK? Because that's using the V middle. OK, so uh, we have 1 half the little guy moving at his velocity of 20 squared equals 1 half kx squared. And that's x, I'll put m for middle or max, just the max compression of the spring, plus 1 half. When they're moving together, they have a mass of 40, and they're moving at 5 meters per second. Um, I'll do the rest of that math down here. So you get two, 20 squared is 400, 4,000, 2,000, okay, equals 
uh, one half of k, k is a thousand, so this would be 500 uh, x max squared plus uh, five squared is 25, 25 times 20 is 5,500. Okay, so you get 500 equals 15, or 500 x max squared equals 1,500, or x max squared equals 3, or x max equals root 3 meters, which if you plug in a calculator, eh, you get about 1.7 or so. All right, so that's the max compression of our spring. That's when we've got the most elastic potential energy stored, okay? Now, um, I want to figure out what's their final velocities after they spread back apart again, okay? So uh, to do that, I'm going to use conservation momentum again. Now, I could either go from when they're moving together at 5 to when they're separated, or I can do the initial condition to the separated final condition. It doesn't matter which one you pick. I'll go from the initial condition, which is this, okay, to um, when they're split up again. So I'm going to use momentum again. So total momentum naught, which is still 200, equals total momentum final, which I've got to calculate. So uh, this is 10 times 20, okay, equals. I've got the 10 kilogram block moving at some final velocity that I don't know. Um, I went ahead and called that A. So in, that, in, in essence, I'm calling that card A and that card B now. So we got VA plus at the 30 kilogram cart going with some VB. Uh, problem, we got two unknowns. But I'll go ahead and simplify, divide everything by 10. You get 20 equals um, VA plus 3VB. So you got a pretty easy equation there. Um, the other equation we're going to use is the elastic collision shortcut equation. So this is an elastic collision. They're going to start with and end with the same amount of total kinetic energy. There's no losses here. When, this, when, the, when they're done bouncing, the spring is uncompressed again. So all the energy goes back into the Kartz's motion. So um, our shortcut equation is VA minus VB before the collision equals negative VA final minus VB final. Okay. Before the collision, A was moving at a velocity of positive 20, B wasn't moving. After the collision, we got our negative VA and then minus negative, which becomes po positive VB. So there's our second equation, same two unknowns. So now it's real simple. I, I would just add these together. Um, 20 plus 20 is 40. The VAs drop out, and you got 4VB. So you end up with, and I'll do this over off to the side here, you've got 40 equals 4VB. Okay, so that gives you a VB of positive 10 meters per second. So this dude is moving to the right at 10 meters per second. How about VA? Well, you plug that number back into either of these two equations. Eh, I'll use this one. So if I put VB in there, uh, that's 3 times 10, that's 30. I move that over to here, it becomes 20 minus 30 is negative 10. So VA ends up being negative 10 meters per second. So they are, they are moving away from each other. Okay. All right. So now we're going to do some graphing. Okay. <laughs> So um, the first thing I want to graph is the energies. I want to graph the kinetic energy of CART uh, 1, um, the kinetic energy, uh, well, actually the total kinetic energy of our system, and the total potential energy stored in the spring. So we're just going to graph those two things. Um, so that'll be our left-hand graph here. Now, both those energies are always positive, so this will be 0. Okay? The two times we're interested in is the time of the start of the collision and the time at the end of the collision. Okay? Before they collided, this cart had all the kinetic energy, and it's just 1 half mv squared. 1 half times 10 is 5. 5 times 20 squared, that's 5 times 4,000. Or 400, that's 2,000. So the total kinetic energy in our system, or the total energy period in our system, is 2,000 joules. And this axis will be energy 
in joules. So right now, cart, little cart has 2,000 joules of energy. Then they start to collide, okay? That energy is going to dip back down. However, when the collision is all said and done and they're split back apart, it's an elastic collision. So the total kinetic energy is, again, 2,000 joules. Now you can double check that if you want. So after the collision, we got VA is 10, so it's 1 half times his mass, which was 10, times 10 squared. So it's 1 half times 1,000 or 500 joules. So little a, a has got, the little dude's got 500 joules. The big dude, his mass is 30. So you do 1 half of 30 is 15. 15 times that 10 squared is 1,500. 500 plus 1,500 is 2,000 joules. Now, in between, that's going to go down, but I'll draw that. So that's 2,000. What about when they're moving together? Okay, that's, the, when the, that's when the potential energy in the spring is a maximum. That's when the kinetic energy is a minimum. What's that kinetic energy there? Well, it's 1 half mv squared. 1 half, they're both moving together, so it's 1 half of 40, which is 20, times 5 squared. So we got 20 times 25. That's uh, 500. So they bottom out somewhere around here, which is 500 joules. That's near the middle of that time. Okay. Um, now here is a, it depends on, on what you're graphing. If you're graphing energy versus time, it would probably look something like this. It would dip down and dip back up. Okay. What about the spring? Okay. Well, the spring starts off uncompressed, so it's zero, has zero energy, and then at the end it's going to have zero energy after the carts have left each other. What about the in-between? Well, what's the max potential energy stored in the spring? Well, that is pretty simple. You're just doing 1 half k x squared. It's 1 half times 1,000 times root 3 squared, which is just 3. So that becomes 500 times 3. 1,500. So the max potential energy stored in the spring is 1,500. We'll put that right about there. And it would basically be the inverse of that, like so. Now, by the way, note, no matter what point you pick, no matter what time you pick on this graph, the total energy is always going to be 2,000. So for instance, if I picked this point right here, they each have 1,000. The spring has 1,000 joules of energy, and the carts to combine their, their kinetic energy is 1,000 for a total of two grand. Because energy is conserved in this case, there are no non-conservative forces acting, so the total energy is always going to be two grand. What about momentum? Okay, well, if I graph momentum versus time, we're going to graph a couple different momentums here. The first one's the total momentum. If I were to graph just the total momentum on that graph, what would that graph look like? Well, momentum is conserved throughout the entire collision, which means it ain't going to change throughout the entire collision. So whatever the initial momentum was, the total is going to be that the entire time. So what was that? Well, our total momentum before the collision was 10 times 20, or 200. So the total momentum is 200. This is momentum in kilograms, meters per second. The two times we're interested in are, again, the time of the start of the collision, the time of the end of the collision. But check it out. The total momentum is just 200 the whole time. That's our total momentum. That don't change. Now, the individual momentums of the carts do change, but they always have to sum to 200. Let's try that out. Let's look at the little dude first. The little dude starts off, he has all the momentum, so I'll, I'll draw like A. It's, right, it's the same height, okay? That's A. What's his final momentum? Well, his final velocity is negative 10. So if I take 10 times negative 10, his final momentum is negative 100. He's going backward, right? So that would be about here. 
right about there. And then he's going to continue moving with that momentum. Um, the in-between part, my guess, would be something like this. Okay, there you go. What about cart number, or the bigger cart, cart B? Well, he starts off, he ain't moving to start off with, so um, his momentum will begin with a zero. Okay, if you know the total momentum is 200 and cart A has negative 100, that means cart B's got to have 300. But if you didn't believe that, you can just do the math. Cart B is moving at, when it's done, it's moving at 10 meters per second. If we do uh, M times V, 30 times 10 is 300. So he ends up with 300 units of momentum when all is said and done. And then he would probably combine like that. Um, now, by the way, whenever you added these two things together, they'd have to add up to 200. So for instance, whatever this value here and here is, when you add them together, they're going to be 200, no matter what time you pick. So that's an example of using conservation of energy and momentum and then graphing uh, both the energy kinetic and potential versus time and then graphing momentum versus time. They often will ask you to at least sketch out these kind of graphs uh, on an AP exam, especially in the free response. So hope that was helpful. Thanks for listening.